Hello, finite math students. How are you? It's been a few days since I posted a video to YouTube for you to look at. <clears throat> I've been extremely busy, a lot of stuff going on in the family. Um, so we're just going to do one problem in this video. That's all we really have time for. Let's keep it short and simple. Well, it may not be simple, but it should be short. Um, it's, uh, it's a challenging problem. It's part of your Chapter 3 finance homework. It is definitely one of the more difficult problems that appears at the end of your homework assignment. It is problem number 138. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, remember that you're you know, the, the exact details of your problems are going to be slightly different. So for example, the amount of money could be different. For me, it's $106,965. For you, it could be $100,000 or $125,000. The amount of money could be different. The interest rate could be different. By the way, an interest rate of 7.2% is really very high. That's a very bad interest rate. Um, usually, you know, if you buy, <clears throat> excuse me, if you buy a condominium or a house, you want an interest rate that is significantly less than this. Uh, if your interest rate is more than 5%, I would say, you know, you're getting ripped off pretty badly. Um, you know, your mortgage for you guys, for me, um, the problem states a 25-year mortgage. For you, it could be a 30-year mortgage, a 20-year mortgage, a 40-year mortgage. Be aware then that the details or the specifics of your problem could be different than mine. Okay? You, you need to really be aware of that. So if you just copy my answer, there's a, a strong probability that you're going to have the wrong answer. Okay, so this is not where you want to do monkey see, monkey do. Okay, <clears throat> Okay. so let's do this problem. This problem is two parts. It's kind of a long problem, and this is the only problem that we're going to do in this video. That's it, um, because I have, unfortunately, I have a lot of other stuff, uh, a lot of other things going on today, so I don't want this video to become super long. <clears throat> A family has a $106,965 25-year mortgage at 7.2% compounded monthly. And again, I want to emphasize that this is a ridiculously high interest rate. All right, it's not a good interest rate. <clears throat> Part A, find the monthly payment and the total interest paid. Part B, Suppose the family decides to add an extra $100 to its mortgage payment each month, starting with the very first payment. How long will it take the family to pay off the mortgage? How much interest will the family save? Okay, so, you know, th this is pretty complicated stuff here. So, um, we're going to, s here, uh, let me push this to a side a little bit. <clears throat> Mm, I'm using a small laptop today. It's a small note. It's a small Mac notebook, so I don't have a lot of space um, on my screen. Okay, so uh, let's see. <clears throat> Edit style sheet. We have input, and we have output. Okay. Let's change the input. Show fonts. Mm, well, you know my, my preferences, guys, by now. I prefer Arial. And uh, maybe that's just a little bit too big. How about 16 points? Maybe 18 points is better for the video, so we'll go with 18 points. Okay. And uh, I guess black is okay. I prefer midnight blue. Midnight blue. <clears throat> Let's go to outputs. 18 point fonts. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Let's make that bold. Um, Arial is my preferred font. Use whatever font works for you. I like midnight blue. Choose whatever color you prefer. Okay. And I mean, we could even we could even add a background. We could say, uh, let's see, format. Uh, one second. Background color. How about light green? That's pretty. That's very pretty. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start by building our balance function. We're going to start by building our balance function. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it balance. I mean, you can call it bal, you can call it b, you can call it f, you can call it whatever you want to call it. it it's better in Mathematica if user-defined function names begin with a lowercase letter. It's not absolutely mandatory, but in general, it's a, good, it's a good practice. It's the recommended practice. I like the name balance. I like the name balance. Balance. Month is going to be my argument or my variable. <clears throat> Month is actually an integer that is passed to the balance function. Okay. Equal to, oh, I almost forgot. This is important. 7.2 divided by 1,200. We add a 1. And this is going to be my interest rate. Shift, enter. Okay, so my monthly interest rate is going to be 1.006. Rate times, so what I owe the balance of my debt this month is equal to the rate times the balance of the previous month minus my payment. Now here payment, payment is an abstract or symbolic variable. Payment is an abstract or symbolic variable. It's really not an argument to the function. It is a symbolic variable. Okay, so <clears throat> month, month is actually an argument that is passed to my function. Payment is not an argument that is passed to my function. Payment is, strictly speaking, a symbolic value. Payment is a symbolic value. It's a placeholder and that's all it is. Actually, I would like to expand this. It'll make the algebra so much easier. We're going to expand that. And balance of zero, balance of zero is equal to the initial amount of money that I borrow which is one hundred and six dollars, nine hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, one hundred and six thousand nine hundred sixty-five dollars. And by the way, this is very important. <clears throat> I did not manually type this comma. Okay, Mathematica inserted the comma for me because that is how I formatted my copy of the software. It's very important to remember. I did not type the comma here. Did you see this number? <clears throat> I did not type the comma. I did not manually enter the comma symbol. I formatted my copy of the software so that large numbers are displayed with commas inserted into the appropriate places. Do you have to do that for your copy of the software? Absolutely not. I think I showed this to you in a previous video, but sometimes, you know, it's necessary for teachers to repeat themselves over and over again because sometimes people, students, don't understand the first time around, okay? So remember, I did not type this comma. Mathematica entered the comma for me 
uh, that is not the default. The default is not a comma. The default is a small space. You can change that if you want to, but it's really your choice. It is not necessary. Okay, again, it is not necessary. Semicolon, shift, enter. Okay, that's my balance function. So how many months are in 25 years? 25 times 12, 300 months. Balance of 300 is equal to this value, a very large number, you know, minus another number times the payment, all right? So solve balance 300 is equal to zero because at the end of 300 months, I will owe zero dollars. My balance will be zero dollars. And I'm looking for the payment. What is the payment? Okay, $769 and about 71 cents. Okay, so right over here, my monthly payment is $769.71. Round to two decimal places. Check answer. Okay, that looks pretty good, right? So Pearson agrees with me. Okay, what is the total interest paid? Let's see. What is the total interest paid? Well, let's think about it. <clears throat> Balance zero is this much money, okay? Balance zero is that much money. How much did I really spend on the house? $769.71 times 300, that's $761.71 per month times 300 months, which is 25 years. So that's a total of $230,913. The difference is going to be the interest. 230913 minus 106, 106965. That's going to be the interest. So the interest is $123,948 and zero cents or no cents. Is that okay? Okay, that looks great. Okay, so now the problem gets a little bit trickier. <clears throat> we have to look at part B very carefully. Excuse me, I kind of have a little bit of a sore throat. So um, I know I'm clearing my throat a lot, which probably, uh, you know, makes the audio a little bit unpleasant. But you know, hey guys, I'm not a professional radio announcer or a professional DJ, so, you know, we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna grin and bear it, okay? <laughs> so let me just, hold on one second, I'm wiping some dirt off my, uh, my screen here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so part B, <clears throat> part B, suppose the family decides to add an extra $100 to its mortgage payment each month starting with the very first payment. How long will it take the family to pay off the mortgage? How much interest will the family save? So this is really a more complicated problem. This is really, a, it's, it's, this is definitely more complicated. Let's go about this very slowly. Um, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to define a new function sort of a new function, sort of a new function. I called this, this function as balance, uh, I'll call this one balance two. So I'm gonna have two different arguments to this function. An argument is an input. We're gonna have the number of months and we're going to have the payment, okay? And that's going to be uh, let me see, the rate times balance to month minus one, it's the previous month's balance, 
and of course we have to include our payment minus the payment. So this time I have a function of two arguments rather than just a function of one argument. Okay, and remember, in case you're wondering, this is our rate, and how did we figure out the rate? 1 plus 7.2 percent divided by 1,200. Okay, <clears throat> so balance 2 is a function of two arguments. The first argument is the number of months, okay, and the domain of the month argument goes from 0 to 300 because there are 300 months in 25 years. And the payment, this should also be a variable argument to my function. So balance two is a function of month and payment. This is equal to the rate times balance two, the, the previous month's balance. And of course, we have to include the second argument minus the payment. And as usual, uh, semicolon balance two zero, uh, this one could be, ah, okay, I know what to do here. Balance to zero payment, that's going to be equal to 106,000 nine hundred sixty five dollars because that's what that's the um, you know that's the initial that's the initial amount actually I'm wondering if I even need to name this variable right here yeah I do yeah I, I do need to name that variable okay so we're fine and then semicolon shift enter okay we're good so let's test it Let's test the function. Balance to 300 months, and uh, I have a payment of $769.71. Okay, so it's pretty close to zero. It's a, if it's a little, if it's slightly different from zero, that's okay, because remember that our payment, um, this is really our payment. <clears throat> Our payment has many, many decimal places, but in the world of finance, you know, we're dealing with currency, so obviously everything, you know, all dollar values, all dollar amounts have to get rounded out to the nearest penny or the nearest, you know, second decimal place. So because of that rounding, we're going to have, you know, a slight discrepancy in the final answer, but this is close enough to zero. This is, this is pretty good. It's okay. It's close enough to zero, okay? Okay, so the next step, the next step is we have to figure out, you know, if I add, if I add a hundred dollars, if I add an extra one hundred dollars to my payment, obviously it's going to take fewer months to pay off my mortgage. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, let's see. I'm going to use the table command, okay, table. I like the letter K. The letter K is a nice index letter. Use any letter you like. You can use Bob. You could use month. You could use X. You could use Y. I, I don't care, but, you know, I like the letter K. It's a nice index letter. Balance to K. Instead of $769.71, I'm going to pay $869.71 every month. $869.71 every month. Okay. K will go from 0 to 300 because there are 300 months and 25 years. I think we can all agree on that. And um, let's table format. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look. Let's scroll down the list of values. Let's scroll down the list of values. <clears throat> mm, there we go. So it's going to take 
about 223. Can you see this right over here? Oops, let me try to highlight that a little better. Around 223 months to pay off my mortgage. So it's going to be, I'll be able to pay off my house or pay off my loan or mortgage or pay for my condominium. Um, <clears throat> I'll be able to pay off my debt 77 months sooner. Instead of 300 months, I can pay it off in 223 months, okay? Um, and I can see, now the, what Pearson's gonna ask you for, Pearson can be very, very tricky about this. Personally, if I was asking you this question on a test, you know, I would say, sure, 223 months, you know, that's an acceptable answer. Pearson, however, is, um, Pearson wants a more precise answer. Okay, Pearson wants a more precise answer. So the question now is, where is the zero value? The zero value or the root, the root is going to be somewhere between 223 and 224. Do we all see that? The root is going to be somewhere between 223 and 224. The root or the zero value is going to be somewhere in between 223 and 224 according to what they call, you know, the intermediate value theorem, which simply means if this value is too positive and this value is too negative, then the zero value is going to be in between. That's the intermediate value theorem, and we know that this will take place somewhere between, you know, x is 223 and x is 224. Okay, so how do we figure that out? Well, first of all, let me repeat this, but only go up to, let's say, 224. We're going to scroll down again. Okay, so I'm looking for the zero value. Okay, 0 0.1 is equal to 223, that's the x value, and the y value is 746. Well, that, here, let me just do it like this. Why make things so complicated for myself? Um, $869.71. Oh, sorry, this is balance two. Okay, so that's going to be point one. Point two is, let's see, 224, balance two, 224, and uh, $869.71. Okay, <coughs> so do you guys remember how to figure out the slope and the intercept? Okay, I want to find the equation of this line. How am I going to do that? Well, if I want to get the x value, that's what I can do. If I want to get the y value, that's what I would do, right? Okay, the same with point 2. So to get the slope, here, actually, let me erase this because this is you don't really need to see that right now. So to get the slope of my line, I could just do point 0.2, the, the y value, minus point 0.1, the y value, okay? I'm gonna highlight this whole thing and press control divide by, and then point 0.1, the second value or y value, minus point 0.1, Oh, sorry, this should be the x value minus, oh, and this should be 0.2, sorry about that. <laughs> 0.2, the x value, and then 0.1, you know, the x value, shift, enter, okay? So that's going to be the slope, okay? And then how do I figure out my y-intercept? So remember that you know, we have y is equal to m times x plus b, okay? Or alternatively, we have, 
um, b is equal to y minus m times x. Yes? So let's pick a point. Let's pick a point. I'll pick point number 1. b is equal to point 1, the y value, minus the slope, which is m, times point 1, the x value. Okay, so that's going to be the slope. I'm sorry, that's, forgive me, that is not the slope. That is the y-intercept of the line. That is the y-intercept of the line. We would get the same answer if we used point 2. Point 2, the y value minus the slope times point 2, and we have the same answer. Okay? So therefore, the equation of the line is going to simply be the slope times some independent variable, I'll call it x, plus b. That's very simple. So let's use our solver. Solve slope times x, or we could say month, plus b is equal to 0. What is the month? Okay, so the answer is 223.862, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so we're going to take this value. <clears throat> I'm going to highlight it, copy, paste, divide by 12 to change it into the appropriate number of years. So that's going to be years. Okay, and number form years infinity to, okay, infinity just means give me all the digits to the left of the decimal place, two means give me two decimals to the right of the decimal place. So the number of years, okay, is going to be 18.66. 18.66 years. Okay, and that is correct. That is correct. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, one second. Now the total interest is going to be, let me think now. Um, okay, the total interest saved this should not be too complicated, although Pearson can be, you know, very, very picky about this. So, okay, um, what was our total interest at the beginning? Well, our total interest is actually right over here. Uh, so, initial interest is equal to, I'm just going to copy it from right over, you know, right over here. Initial interest is $123,948. $123,948. That's the initial interest. Okay. Now, how do we figure out um, how do we figure out the you know the interest in the second case? Okay. Well, now we have to think about it. Okay. So balance two, actually we could, we could just go right up here. Uh, where's my table? Okay, <clears throat> so balance two, balance two says, okay, the balance two function tells me that after tw uh, 223 months, that's it, I'm, I'm done. After, after 223 months, I'm done paying off my mortgage. Okay, do we agree? Okay, so here, one second. What was my payment? Uh, I'm just looking for the exact, hold on, where's my payment? <clears throat> okay, so the payment, 869.71. Let me, let me copy and paste this so I don't forget that. Okay, so this is, I'm, I'm actually going to store this in a variable. Um, oops, sorry. Okay, 
So what I pay each month is $869.71. That's what I'm paying each month. Okay. And I know, let me see, I know that it took 223 payments in order to pay off my mortgage. I, I think we can all agree on that. Okay. So 223 um, 223 times the payment minus what I initially paid. What I well actually what I initially borrowed. What I initially borrowed was this amount of money, 900 uh, 106,000 one second. 106,965 dollars. So that's really the interest. That's the, I'll call it the new interest. The new interest is 223 months times what I'm actually paying every month, which is $869.71, minus what I initially borrowed, which was $106,965. Okay, terrific. Shift, enter. Okay. So now I have my initial interest and my new interest. So what's the difference? Initial interest minus the new interest. This is how much money I will save on interest if I pay an extra $100 every month. So let's see if Pearson agrees with that. <clears throat> $36,967, one second. $36,967.67. Okay, why are they giving me a hard time about this one? Um, because actually that should be correct. Um, you know what it might be, hold on one second. I believe, okay, the number they want over here, and I don't told, okay, well, they really want this number right over here. They really want this number right over here, although I think Pearson is being a little bit too picky, but that's okay. Okay, for the sake of being more exact, I think Pearson wants that number, but actually, from a, real, a more realistic point of view, we should be able to use the integer of 223, but okay. Pearson's gonna be very picky about this. So, yeah, we're gonna have a, a slightly bigger number there, which means this number will change a little bit. Okay, so then let's try that. Let's try $36,217.71. And I believe this time um, Pearson should be happy with the answer. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Because Pearson, so let me explain something. This, this gets a little bit tricky. It depends, you know, um, if I was going to give you my own test, which I'm not, I'm giving you a Pearson test. If I was giving you my own test, um, <clears throat> I would be perfectly satisfied with an answer of 223, but Pearson is looking for the exact root to make things, you know, a little more complicated. I mean, what's going to end up happening is um, your 223rd payment would just be a little bit larger in order to uh, in order to completely pay off the mortgage. Um, that's how people would do it in the real world, but um, what Pearson is looking for really is, uh, let me see, where was that number? What Pearson is looking for is not 223, but 223 points, 8627500808, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So, yeah, they want an answer that's going to be a little bit more precise. Okay? But in the real world, your 223rd payment would just be slightly larger than normal in order to offset the difference and basically, you know, just pay off your mortgage or pay off, pay off your debts. Okay, so um, this is a fun problem. It's definitely involved because it has many parts. It has many parts. Um, <clears throat> 
And some of you might think, oh, Mr. Lewitt, you're so mean because you're making us use Mathematica. Well, um, there are formulas, there are algebraic, there are algebraic financial formulas that you could use instead. But you know, those formulas can get really messy and very complicated. One little mistake and you're going to completely mess up your final answer. Um, honestly, I like Mathematica, it's good stuff. It does a lot of the, it does most of the arithmetic for me. You still have to think about the logic of setting up the problem yourself, but Mathematica takes care of the rest. It takes care of all the arithmetic and bookkeeping for you, which I think simplifies the problem so much. Okay, <clears throat> so, um, and you know, a lot of young people nowadays, they love their cell phones, they love their smartphones, they love their laptops, they love Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, eBay, you know, you guys are part of the big computer generation. So I don't understand why a lot of uh, students at Oakton don't like Mathematica. I mean, Mathematica is just another example of modern computer technology. And, <clears throat> you know, we all know that today's young people love modern computer technology. Okay, let me write that over here. Um, print. Actually, I'm going to show you something kind of cool. For i is equal to 1, i is less than or equal to 10, print. Today's young people love computer technology. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to put in a little pause pause for maybe two tenths of a second and um, let's see um, what else should I add to make this interesting um, let's see what this is gonna look like shift enter <clears throat> So there you have it. I just showed you a for loop in Mathematica. And it reads, I could make this a little bit bigger, but well, I guess that's okay. That's good enough. It reads, today's young people love computer technology. So if that's true, if you guys love computer technology, you know, if your generation loves computer technology so much, I have a hard time understanding why a lot of young people at Oakton College don't like Mathematica. <coughs> you know, you guys love Amazon, eBay, Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, um, you know, you guys are really all into, you know, this modern stuff and modern computer technology. Well, Wolfram Mathematica is an example of modern computer technology. Okay. It's technology. It is software that helps people to solve very complicated mathematics problems. It's very useful stuff. It's very powerful stuff. Okay? All right, guys, I think we're done for today. This video is definitely long enough, uh, maybe a little longer than I originally planned. <clears throat> um, I encourage you, please, if you're having some problems with, with the homework, um, you can email me. I'll try to help you out. But bear in mind, I'm going to help you out the Mathematica way because the Mathematica way is pretty much my way. That's how I teach. That's how, I, that's how I've been teaching for years. I love Mathematica. It's good stuff. And um, <clears throat> actually, I think it's great stuff. And I have been pretty successful at Oakton College at incorporating Mathematica into the vast majority of the courses that I teach. That's just my style of teaching. Some people, some students love it. Some students tolerate it. Some students hate it. You know, some students love it. Some tolerate it. Some hate it. Um, you know, but that's just how I teach, and uh, that's not going to change any, anytime soon. Okay? Thanks, and um, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, and good luck with the rest of your homework, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, take care now, and goodbye.